no good way to say it, so why not just come right out and say that I, a man whose very first game was Wolfenstein 3D, loves Pokemon. Obviously, much more so in the past than today, but I still loved and still rather like the series. Now, I'm well aware that my pronunciation of Pokemon is wrong. It's Pokemon. But you see, I don't want to poke any mons, so therefore I am simply going to say poke e -mon. Now, Pokemon is not just a series of games. Rather, it's a series of everything. Really, anything that the Pokemon name touches instantly turns to gold, almost. Or rather, yellow. Yeah, I was that big of a fan that my Game Boy case was a Pokemon case, complete with Pikachu and the stupid catchphrase of, gotta catch them all. There were actually two types of games that the Pokemon franchise encompassed. There was, of course, the video game series, but then there was a card game. Thankfully, I never played that bloody game, but rest assured, I did actually have a number of Pokemon cards. Now, to make matters worse, the Pokemon cards were actually every bit as popular as the video games themselves. And of course, who can forget that damned anime series? As should be expected, this series was extremely popular back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and of course, it's still going on today. And also, and I seem to be saying this a lot, unfortunately, the series itself was a very well done adaptation of the games. You see, they could only get it right when it came to a stupid premise of monsters beating the hell out of each other. But hey, they got it right, so that's something in their favor. As should be expected, I loved it then, and I can tell you this, watching it now, I still kinda like it. I just don't know why. It's Pokemon. It is God. Hell, I even went to the first movie opening day. Yes. I drug my grandfather on opening day to one of the dumbest movies I've ever sat through. Although at the time, I of course loved it. And I bet you can guess which Pokemon game was my favorite. Not the red, not the blue, but of course, the yellow. The one that is so much like the anime. You see, not only did I like a stupid game, but I liked a stupid show, and I liked the stupid game even more when it was like the stupid show. You know what really makes it sad? At the time I loved Pokemon Yellow, I played games like Turok 2 and F-Zero X. Where did I go wrong? Now why, you may cry out, is the series so successful? Well, because, as stupid as it is, they actually put a lot of thought into it. The reason for its success is actually twofold, at least the games anyway. First, the gameplay is addictive. Don't ask me how it's addictive, it just is. And second, the overall series premise is actually pretty awesome. The basic premise is somewhat simplistic. At the age of 10, kids leave home and go catch Pokemon, and as the tagline would suggest, they would try and catch them all, and eventually compete in leagues and things of that nature. Here's the thing. Really, what kid would not absolutely love that premise? And it really is more accessible for a younger audience. You really wouldn't see a ten-year-old become Captain Shepard, now would you? These days, people with modern sensibilities see this premise as rather stupid. It's like, well, how would they survive with no money or no schooling and things of that nature? All I need to do is point out the fact that back in the 19th century and times before then, kids would do something similar to this. Some would just, like, leave the farm and seek out fortune on their own simply by using their own wits and drive. There's many cases where kids did that and actually became really successful. Now today, we are going to take a look at the game that started Pokemon on its road to supremacy. Today, we are going to take a look at the might and majesty that is... Pokemon Red. This game here 
was the very first RPG that I had ever played. And, to this day, is the only Pokemon game that I have ever fully completed. Unfortunately, the battery in my cart has long since died, so we are only going to be able to see a very small portion of the game. Now, you have already probably noticed that the gameplay and graphics are rather similar to another RPG series. That's right, this game is a natural evolution of the Dragon Warrior series. Now, in Dragon Warrior, you have the same top-down navigation, the main difference is obviously the inclusion of Pokemon and the fact that you are not the one doing the fighting, but rather a genetically engineered monster. Now, to put Pokemon in perspective, this is what we had to play it on. The Game Boy, or in my case, the Game Boy Color. Essentially, what we would have to do is sit for hours at a time staring at this tiny, non-backlit screen. You almost had to sit underneath a 6,000 watt halogen light to even see anything! As you should already have noticed, Pokemon is an RPG. You start out selecting a name of your character and that of a rival. I never really got this part, to tell you the truth. He is supposed to be your rival, but couldn't you just say that that's enough? You're finished with being a certain medical supply and that you're going to be a bigger man and let it go? Well, there's no real way to actually do that, but I would like to have some sort of dialogue box or just some sort of animation where my character raises his middle finger and walks away, you know? But unfortunately, that is not the case. So after that's done, the game cuts to your character's room, and damn does it not look like a room from the late 90s. You've got a Super Famicom right there, and a computer in the corner! Basically, this could be one's room as a kid. But I want to play Godzilla Kaiju Dakasin! I want to play Kamen Rider! Oh, alright, fine, I'll go on some bloody death-defying adventure and explore strange new places and encounter new civilizations. But still, who can resist the allure of Kamen Rider on the Super Famicom? Okay, moving on. The game proper actually begins when you acquire your own Pokémon. Essentially, a Pokémon is a genetically engineered pet designed for combat in either competitive tournaments or personal defense. Personally, I would like to have one of these creatures in real life. Because real pets just don't seem to cut it at all. Claw swipe attack! Claw swipe attack, I said! Claw swipe Gameplay is broken up between third-person overhead exploration and third-person cutout Pokemon battling. Gameplay overall is actually more complex than you would think. Not at all like today's kitty games. Really, this is a real hardcore game. The game world itself is absolutely massive, and you actually have a number of ways to get around it. You can get a bike, and you can ride on various Pokemon. To get over bodies of water, you can use a water Pokemon, and to cover long distances in a short time, you can use a flying Pokemon. One problem I have noticed, though, is the battling sometimes seems a bit forced. You see, sometimes, other Pokemon trainers will come up and demand to battle you, and there is no way to get out of it. And if you are defeated, you will actually lose money. Now, if it were me, and somebody demanded to fight me, and expected to get paid if they were somehow able to defeat me, well, I'd have to introduce them to one of my very special Pokemon. A Pokemon named Mr. Winchester! As for the music, it is rather catchy. And if you play the game for an extended period of time, you may actually find yourself humming it now and again. <laughs> Overall, the battling is quite a bit of fun, and it does feel like a battle and not just a numbers game. Although, numbers and stats and things of that nature do play a big role in Pokemon battling. And really, 
The animations are fairly limited. Basically, all your Pokémon does is bounce back and forth, more than anything else. But even then, the battling is highly addictive. And while it may seem simplistic at first glance, it really is quite difficult to master. Your overall goals in the game are fairly open-ended. Essentially, you just have two main goals. The first, fill the Pokédex, which is a database of Pokémon, and the second is compete in and win the Indigo League. Now, how you go about that is basically up to you. Now, you can't actually fill the Pokédex unless you have access to Pokémon Blue, as the red version doesn't have all the Pokémon. But neither does the blue. It's kind of a mean marketing ploy to get you to buy both games, but oh well. Overall, though, you get a large amount of gameplay out of that one game. To actually complete the game, you have to compete in the Indigo League. And to compete in the Indigo League, you have to collect badges at various gyms. These gym battles are roughly analogous to boss fights. But, in all reality, you're not all that locked down as far as the order of completion goes. There would later be a remake of Red in the guise of Fire Red for the GBA. The game itself is not that bad and really holds true to the first game. However, it is slightly more of a kitty game than the first, as it holds your bloody hand the entire way. You see, here, it's telling you how to battle, even though in the first one it was just, do it. But then again, we wouldn't want to have to use our brains now, would we? The graphics look great. In the first game, your Pokémon just sort of appeared. Whereas here, you actually throw a visible Pokéball. The battle animations are still fairly simplistic, but they do look slightly better. Needless to say, Pokémon Red is, unfortunately, a classic. Now, if you're an RPG fan and missed it the first time around, you might want to give it a try. Just ignore the anime and all the piddly crap that came after. The game itself is sound. So this is General Watts, wishing you good, Pokemon Red, and good... Ye yellow version. No, yellow version is exactly the same as Red, except it has that bloody Pikachu in it. So good... Yellow version. Oh, just get back to your bloody universe. Good fire red. Or whatever makes you happy.